the latest updates from the Gateway Development Committee GDC and related reports as of December 17, 2025, highlighted a significant achievement in the Hudson Tunnel Project, the completion of production and factory acceptance testing for the first two tunnel boring machines, TBMs. These custom-built machines manufactured by Germany's Herrenknecht represent a major step forward in the $16 billion initiative to build new rail tunnels under the Hudson River. The first TBM completed testing in September 2025, while the second was completed in early December 2025. Each machine has a 28-foot, 8-inch cutting head diameter, weighs approximately 1,680 tons, and includes cranes extending approximately 500 feet. Specifically designed for this project, they can construct approximately 30 feet of concrete line tunnel per day. Shipping of TBM tunnel boring machine components to New Jersey is expected to begin in January 2026, for the first machine arriving at ports such as Port Elizabeth and Baltimore before being transported by truck to the North Bergen site at the foot of the Palisades Mountains. Assembly and on-site testing will take approximately three months with drilling operations beginning in the spring of 2026. Parts for the second machine will be shipped in March 2026, allowing drilling to begin in the summer of 2026. Both TBMs will operate in parallel to excavate approximately 1.6-kilometer, one-mile of twin tunnel on the New Jersey side from North Bergen through the Palisades Range to Weehawken. This milestone aligns with broader progress across five active construction packages as detailed in articles from December 2025. Marking two years since its commencement, the project remains on schedule, scope, and budget, providing jobs for thousands of workers. An estimated 11,000 to over 20,000 jobs are being supported. Alongside the underwater operations, what's happening in Manhattan, and if you want to follow each key step of this project, subscribe to the On the Trains channel so you don't miss the next analysis. On the Manhattan side, the tunnel project includes the installation of guide walls and mud wall construction for the number 12 well, along with ground stabilization near the Manhattan Embankment and under the river at Hudson River Park. These efforts prepare the ground beneath the embankment for future exploratory drilling. Additionally, GDC has opened Community Engagement Center's CECs near the active sites with the New York CEC opening in December 2025, and the New Jersey CEC to be deployed soon after. These centers feature interactive exhibits for all ages to learn about the project and organize educational programs with local schools and organizations. Community outreach extends to community events such as stalls at Chelsea Market's Down to Earth Farmers Market and North Bergen Public Library, along with partnerships such as food donations with St. Lawrence Church in Weehawken and presentations with Hudson River Community Sailing. These updates underscore the project's momentum with solid preparations underway for the arrival of TBMs and the transition to major tunneling phases in 2026. Other updates. In addition to the significant milestone achieved with the tunnel boring machines, the December 2025 Gateway Development Commission Bulletin provides a detailed progress report on five ongoing construction packages centered around core tunneling efforts for the Hudson Tunnel Project. These packages highlight the development of essential preparatory infrastructure throughout New Jersey and New York, ensuring sites are fully equipped for upcoming machine deployment and operation phases. Beginning with the Tonalay Avenue Bridge Project and the relocation of associated utility lines in North Bergen, New Jersey, the entire bridge structure has now been completed, creating a crucial tunnel beneath Tonalay Avenue, facilitating seamless transportation of TBM components directly to the assembly site at the foot of Palisades. The only remaining work in this contract is paving the final section of the new road surface above the bridge, which is expected to be completed soon in preparation for the arrival of the tunnel boring machine in January 2026. Moving to Manhattan, the concrete shell of Hudson Yards, Section 3 serves as the final section of the rail corridor running beneath Hudson Yards, and this contract is more than half complete with excavation largely finished and tunnel box construction progressing rapidly. A key highlight is the successful execution of a major concrete pour in October 2025 with a substantial volume of 4,500 cubic meters, which has enhanced structural integrity and set the stage for integrating this section with previously constructed sections. Meanwhile, the Hudson River Stabilization Project targets a critical riverbed area stretching between New Jersey and New York, where recent efforts include relocating the temporary retaining wall waterlogged embankment closer to Manhattan to enclose a portion of the widened riverbed. 
This maneuver effectively removes remaining timber piles from the remnants of Pier 68, thus clearing obstacles for smooth tunneling in the near future. To date, nearly 60,000 square feet of riverbed have been successfully stabilized using deep mixed soil combined with lightweight concrete, reaching depths of up to 106 feet, approximately 32 meters, while using a total of 208,000 cubic feet of material enough to pave sidewalks stretching from New York City to Chicago. Finally, on the New Jersey side, the Palisades Tunnel Project comprises two active construction sites at North Bergen Excavation for the tunnel entrance and launch box where the tunnel boring machines, TBMs, will be assembled, continues at a steady pace preparing for on-site machine integration beginning in early 2026, and at Weehawken, a comprehensive noise barrier has been installed around the perimeter of the site to minimize disruption to the community. Initial preparations for the construction of the mud wall mud barrier for the Hudson County access shaft have begun laying the groundwork for the development of a deeper shaft to support ventilation and access during tunnel construction. As physical construction accelerates how prepared is Amtrak institutionally, Amtrak's role in OIG review, Amtrak played a supporting but crucial role in the Hudson Tunnel Project, contributing approximately $1.016 billion in funding, providing manpower for construction, and being responsible for some of the cost overruns. Primary oversight was handled by the GDC, a public authority established by New York and New Jersey to lead construction and implementation. Amtrak's involvement focuses on short-term obligations and long-term operations, including testing new tunnels scheduled for completion by 2035 and upgrading the existing North River Tunnel by 2038. A December 17, 2025 report from Amtrak's Office of the Inspector General OIG assesses the company's performance based on interviews, site visits, and a review of over 650 documents and notes, solid progress on immediate tasks Amtrak has efficiently handled, asset acquisition recruited personnel for the project team, and developed initial planning for the tunnel's commissioning and operation. These steps ensure readiness for the expansion of rail capacity, which will double the number of tracks under the Hudson River and enhance reliability on the Northeast Corridor. However, the OIG has identified three key areas for improvement to mitigate risks. First, Amtrak needs to clarify its role with external partners as disagreements remain regarding Amtrak's input on design construction management in non-primary contracts and overall risk management processes. This has resulted in GDC having restricted access to certain documents because it could affect competitive bidding. Second, greater internal involvement is needed from departments such as accounting and procurement. For example, accounting staff were unaware of the $100 million overpayment to GDC until notified by the OIG, allowing for timely recognition of the reimbursement for accurate year-end financial reporting. Third, document management needs improvement. Amtrak has a web-based system for thousands of project files, but not all stakeholders use it consistently, leading to ongoing remediation efforts. The report makes four recommendations clearly define Amtrak's roles with partners, collaborate with GDC for full access to risk information, identify internal stakeholders and assign responsibilities for activities, and improve the document management system. In response, Amtrak's Executive Vice President Laura Mason agreed with all points, noting that two recommendations have been implemented, and the remainder are expected to be completed by mid-2026. This feedback round aims to enhance Amtrak's contribution, ensuring smoother integration as the project progresses. With the tunnel boring machines finally ready to cut beneath the Hudson, the Hudson Tunnel Project is no longer a question of if construction can happen, but how it will be governed once the most complex phase begins. As Amtrak moves closer to long-term operational responsibility, despite not being the project's lead agency, will clearer coordination and accountability emerge in time to match the project's technical momentum, or will unresolved governance and funding uncertainties become the next major obstacle beneath the surface? What do you think this tunneling milestone means for Amtrak's role going forward? Beneath Manhattan, inside the first tube now fully taken out of service Tunnel 2, a sweeping transformation is unfolding, one that is visible even at a glance. The most striking change is the complete reconstruction of the bench walls. The century-old concrete long cracked, spalled, and crushed under decades of pressure, and the corrosive aftermath of Hurricane Sandy has been entirely demolished. In its place, crews are pouring new, thicker, high-strength concrete walls, engineered with expanded internal channels to house a fully modernized utility network. 
As Warren LeBeau, Amtrak's vice president of infrastructure, puts it plainly, we completely removed the bench walls and all the electrical conduits inside and found them severely damaged. That discovery set the stage for an all-new wiring and signal system. Thousands of meters of corroded salt-soaked cables have been cut out and discarded, replaced with neatly organized bundles of fiber optic and electrical lines built to 21st century standards critical for stable operations and long-term reliability that should extend well into the next century. The track structure itself is also being fundamentally re-engineered. The traditional ballast stones and the loose rock bed that contributed to vibration erosion and uneven wear have been removed entirely. In their place, the tunnel floor is now being rebuilt as a continuous concrete track slab providing a rigid stable foundation designed to reduce vibration and improve ride quality for higher speed movements. Safety improvements are equally dramatic. The trackside walls are being lowered to address a major evacuation issue. Previously, passengers would have had to climb up high ledges during an emergency. With the redesigned profile, adults and children alike can step directly from the train to the emergency walkway without scrambling over hazardous obstacles. At the same time, the entire tunnel is being brought up to the most advanced fire protection standards with new smoke sensors, emergency ventilation systems, fire-resistant materials, and redundant lighting features that simply cannot be added through piecemeal repairs. Its defenses against saltwater infiltration are also being rebuilt from the ground up. The original concrete lining is thoroughly cleaned, a specialized waterproofing membrane is applied, and a redesigned drainage system is incorporated to rapidly channel away any seepage. These far-reaching changes raise a crucial question, where does the project currently stand? Let's move on to the next section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for daily train updates. Progress and Timeline as of mid-December 2025, the East River Tunnel Rehabilitation has completed roughly six to decas seven months of the 13-month work window for the first tube a stretch long enough to prove that the project is advancing almost exactly according to its original schedule. The effort formally began in May-June 2025 when Amtrak fully closed Tunnel 2 and initiated Phase 1. Within the first half year, demolition work reached 100% completion and overall progress inside the tunnel climbed to nearly 50%. By mid-December 2025, the project is firmly in the reconstruction phase. Hundreds of workers rotate through round-the-clock shifts with the constant rhythm of concrete pumps, steel cutting, and immediate quality inspections echoing through the tube. The work pace is being pushed to the highest sustainable level while maintaining uncompromising safety, something Amtrak leadership has repeatedly stressed in its latest updates. Ahead lies a clearly defined timeline that has remained unchanged since day one. In July 2026, Tunnel 2 is scheduled to finish all construction, undergo comprehensive testing, and reopen to commercial service. This will be followed by a three-month pause from August through October 2026 dedicated to synchronizing the newly installed signaling systems with the three remaining tunnels. This step is essential to ensure that once all four tubes are in service, train operations flow seamlessly without even a momentary disruption. Beginning in October 2026, the next tunnel will be taken offline for its own 13-month reconstruction effort, mirroring the now-proven process underway in Tunnel 2. By late 2027, all four East River tunnels are expected to be fully restored and operating to modern standards marking the completion of the $1.6 billion program. In recent statements, Warren LeBeau, Laura Mason of Amtrak, and Rob Free of the Long Island Railroad have all reaffirmed that the project remains on schedule with no significant delays more than a technical projection. It is a renewed commitment to the millions of passengers who have waited since Hurricane Sandy in 2012 for the day when all four tunnels can once again operate safely and reliably. With the timeline holding firm, it's time to examine what these efforts will mean once the tunnels reopen. The Challenges Despite the strong momentum and visible progress, the East River Tunnel overhaul has faced a formidable set of challenges rooted in the sheer complexity of underground engineering on an active high-density rail corridor. The most difficult obstacles were technical and logistical. Before the tunnel could be fully taken out of service, crews had to perform an exhausting weekly ritual. Every Monday, they reassembled temporary cables, utility lines, and makeshift tracks along the tunnel walls to keep trains moving through the remaining tubes. By Friday, they spent hours dismantling all of it, only to secure a narrow weekend window of real construction time. Amtrak's Laura Mason identified this cycle as the core reason why this work couldn't be done at night, and on weekends as usual, insisting a full shutdown was the only way to achieve meaningful progress. 
Working 30 meters underground in a tightly confined space with 350 workers rotating around the clock also placed enormous pressure on safety protocols and fatigue management. Operational challenges quickly surfaced as well. ALIRR service disruption in September 2025, triggered by an initially unidentified issue inside the tunnel, validated early MTA concerns about relying on only three tunnels. In such a constrained setup, even a minor incident can escalate into a system-wide crisis affecting tens of thousands of riders. Interagency coordination became another major hurdle. Early debates focused on whether to reduce the number of operating tracks during construction while maintaining reliable service required constant precise communication among Amtrak, LIRR, and NJ Transit. All three agencies had to synchronize scheduling emergency procedures and train movements through the remaining tunnels with no margin for error. Ultimately, they stabilized the situation through concrete actions, 24 per 7 staffing frequent equipment inspections, and revamped response protocols. Across all updates, team cohesion was repeatedly highlighted as the key to keeping the system running. LIRR's Rob Free emphasized, If Amtrak wins, we all win, while Mason underscored that we are working together, communicating, discussing to ensure we understand each other about how to navigate trains. The result was a rare achievement for a project of this scale. Disruption stayed minimal, on-time performance remained high, and the MTA publicly commended Amtrak for its steady coordinated management during one of the most demanding infrastructure operations in the Northeast. Ultimately, the challenges encountered beneath the East River were not just technical obstacles but also tests of coordination resilience and institutional discipline. Each obstacle, from service disruptions to suffocating working conditions, forced the team to refine its approach and strengthen the project's operational backbone. Benefits and Impacts For passengers, each tube will be capable of supporting roughly 150-450 trains per day, with far greater reliability effectively eliminating the risk of system-wide paralysis should another sandy-scale superstorm strike. Even now operating with only three tunnels, LIRR has sustained an impressive 96.3% on-time performance. Safety improvements represent another major leap forward. The tunnels are being rebuilt to fully meet modern fire safety standards supported by a new system that will streamline train inspection, monitoring, and directional control, advanced waterproofing measures, and a redesigned drainage system, ensuring the tunnels can better withstand flooding and climate-driven environmental stress for decades to come. The socioeconomic impact is equally significant. This project safeguards the mobility of over 10 million people across New York, New Jersey, and Long Island, preserving one of the Northeast Corridor's most indispensable links. As the busiest rail artery in the United States, a more reliable NEC translates directly into increased economic productivity, shorter delays, strengthened regional connectivity, and long-term stability for millions of daily commuters. The project itself sustains around-the-clock employment for 350 direct workers and supports thousands more in construction, logistics, engineering, and material supply injecting millions into the local economy. Environmental benefits also ripple outward. A more dependable rail network encourages greater use of public transit over private vehicles, helping reduce emissions, ease congestion, and support sustainability goals in one of the world's most densely populated urban regions. As Amtrak's Warren LeBeau puts it, we will be able to evacuate passengers at the appropriate height, inspect and adjust train directions for safe operation, and the new systems will be able to ensure operation in this tunnel for the next 100 years. That is the true value of this $1.6 billion investment, not merely repairing what was damaged, but building the future of mobility for the entire Northeast. But to reach these long-term gains, the project had to overcome a series of tough obstacles. So when all four tunnels reopen, what are you most looking forward to? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you.